Defense Counsel for the Honorable Chief Justice Renato C. Corona. Good afternoon, Your Honors. I am Attorney Noel D. Lazaro, respectfully appearing for the defense. Good afternoon, Your Honors. I am Ramon S. Esguera. I'm appearing as co-counsel for the respondent, Chief Justice Renato C. Corona. A pleasant day, Your Honors. Respectfully appearing for the Chief Justice Renato C. Corona. I am Attorney Rico Paolo Arquicho. Your Honors, for the defense, Herman Q. Lichop II, for Chief Justice Renato C. Corona. Anyone else? There being none, the appearances for the defense are hereby noted. Pursuant to Rule 9 of the rules, let it be made of record that the Chief Justice Renato C. Corona has entered his appearance by counsel and that he is personally present in these proceedings. Majority Floor Leader. Thank you. Mr. President, on December 14, 2011, the court, pursuant to Rule 7 of our rules, adopted Senate Impeachment Court Resolution No. 1, providing that summons be issued to the Chief Justice Renato C. Corona to answer to the articles of impeachment. The summons was served on the Chief Justice on December 15, 2011, by the Sergeant at Arms, who made the return under oath before the Secretary on December 19, 2011. Mr. President, I move that the said return be entered at large on the records in compliance with Rule 8 of the rules. Is there any objection? Chair, here's none. There being no objection, the motion is approved. Mr. President. Majority Floor Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. As stated in the January 9, 2012 notice of the presiding officer, copies of which were served and duly received by the parties, we are to consider as part of the day's business the motion for preliminary hearing filed by the defense on December 29, 2011, and the comment thereon filed by the prosecution on January 9, 2012. However, after the issuance of the notice, the defense filed on January 12, 2012, a motion to admit reply to comment alleging that, quote, there are certain inaccuracies in the comment filed by the complainants, end of quote, to its motion for preliminary hearing and praying that the reply to comment be admitted. Before proceeding, therefore, Mr. President, to the consideration of the motion for preliminary hearing, as we have previously informed the parties, I move that we first consider the said motion to admit reply to the comment of the defense. Is there any objection? There being none, we shall now consider the motion to admit reply to comment. Mr. President, I move that the presiding officer rule on the motion to admit reply to comment. Is there any objection to the motion to admit reply to the comment? There being none, the chair rules to grant the motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. DeMajorce, floor leader. I now move that we consider the motion for preliminary hearing of Chief Justice Renato C. Corona filed on December 29, 2011. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion to consider the motion for preliminary hearing of Chief Justice Renato C. Corona filed on December 29, 2011 is approved. Mr. President, I move that we dispense with the reading of the motion in full and ask the Secretary to just read the prayer. The Secretary shall now please read the prayer of the motion. Prayer. Wherefore, it is respectfully prayed that one, 
a preliminary hearing be held on the affirmative defense that the verification of the verified complaint for impeachment is fatally defective. Second, thereafter, the verified complaint <laughs> for impeachment be dismissed. Makati for Pasay City, December 29, 2011, respectfully submitted by Jacinto D. Jimenez, signed Counsel for Chief Justice Renato C. Corona. Mr. Sir, President, if I may. Thank you, Mr. President. In summary, the motion prays that a preliminary hearing be held on the affirmative defense that the verification of the verified complaint for impeachment is fatally defective and that thereafter the verified complaint for impeachment be dismissed. The motion alleges the following. The verified complaint for impeachment lacks the proper verification because only four copies were made available at the time it was signed and because its text consists of 57 pages with 34 documents consisting of 131 pages annexed to it. And as such, it was physically impossible for the 180 members of the House of Representatives to have read, understood, and evaluated the same. There was a PowerPoint presentation of the verified complaint for impeachment but the signatories signed it before the conclusion of the PowerPoint presentation, which was aborted. The Chief Justice claims that since the verified complaint for impeachment lacks a proper verification, it should be treated as an unsigned pleading, which produces no legal effect and should, therefore should be dismissed. Upon the other hand, the prosecutors submit that the filing of the verified impeachment complaint by 188 members of the House of Representatives is in accordance with the House of Representatives' exclusive power to initiate all cases of impeachment in line with Paragraph 4, Section 3, Article 6 of the Constitution. They aware the following. The verified impeachment complaint is verified because on its face there is a verification under oath which is signed by 188 congressmen which is more than one-third of all of the members of the House of Representatives. The verified impeachment complaint was sworn to before the Secretary General of the House of Representatives who is a duly authorized officer to administer the oath. A verification is sufficient when it is signed and sworn to by a party, parties who has sufficient knowledge and belief as to the allegations therein. In this instance, the matters stated in the impeachment complaint were well known and familiar to the 188 congressmen who signed the same. The Supreme Court has, in decided cases, been liberal in construing the word reading in relation to the verification requirement. There is a strong presumption of regularity and validity in the discharge of the House of Representatives of their official duties, including that of filing of the verified impeachment complaint, which has not been overcome by the allegations of the Chief Justice. Article 11, Section 3, 4 of the Constitution does not require verification by all the complainants. It speaks of filing by at least one-third of the members and not verification by all of the said members. Thus, it is sufficient that there is a verified complaint by at least one person and that such complaint is filed by at least one-third of the members of the House of Representatives. Chief Justice Corona's objection to the verified impeachment complaint is moot since it since it has been transmitted to the Senate for trial. Chief Justice Corona's objections to the verified impeachment complaint have been waived by his uh, public pronouncements that he is willing to face trial in the Senate and by his filing of his answer in motion for preliminary hearing. And a verification is a formal and not a jurisdictional requirement. Mr. President, the reply to comment filed by the Counsel for Chief Justice Renato C. Corona, on the other hand, angle or alleges the following. 
The Senate is an impeachment court and has the power to determine 